Hello. So we continue with uh, unit two, and now uh, we are in session two, where we are looking at a trade based on absolute advantage and trade based on comparative advantage. Before we look at those two, it should be mentioned uh, that trade started way back and when we are talking about international trade, we don't forget to mention the effort or contribution of the mercantilists. According to the mercantilists, nations could gain from trade if they acquire more precious metals and that they restrict the amount of imports and uh, promote more exports out of the country, meaning that nations could become more wealthy if they maintain a positive trade balance. But away from that, we also had other uh, uh, theories, uh, such as the theory of absolute advantage, which now looked at uh, the basis for trade as well as the gains from trade. Now, according to this theory of absolute advantage, a nation will be said to have an absolute advantage over another nation if it can produce uh, a given commodity with fewer resources compared to the other nation. For example, if we assume only two nations, nation one and nation two, and each nation has, uh, is able to produce two commodities, commodity X and commodity Y, then we can say that nation one has an absolute advantage in the production of commodity X over nation two if nation one can produce commodity X using fewer resources compared to nation two. In the real world state, if we assume that uh, we are only looking at two nations, Zambia and China, and that uh, we are only looking at two commodities, copper and clothes, then we can say that Zambia has an absolute advantage in the production of copper over China if it can produce copper using fewer resources compared to China. This means that China has an absolute disadvantage with respect to Zambia in the production of copper because China is using more resources to produce copper uh, compared to Zambia. And if we uh, put uh, China to be on the clothing, of, uh, to be efficient in the production of clothes, then we can say that China has an absolute advantage in the production of clothes with respect to Zambia because China is using fewer resources in the production of clothes compared to the resources that Zambia uses. And this means Zambia will have an absolute disadvantage. Now, if you look at uh, uh, the structure, if we are to measure whether each nation will gain or not, we need now to bring in the issues of specialization. Since Zambia has been spotted to be efficient in the production of copper and China has been spotted to be efficient in the production of clothes, it means then that the two nations can each specialize in the production of the commodity of its absolute advantage. And by doing so, the nations will produce more output for their commodities because they are efficient in producing them. Meaning Zambia should specialize in producing copper while China should specialize in producing clothes. And after the output is produced, the two nations can exchange through trade the commodities that they have produced and both nations will gain. What we will see out of that is that welfare will be improved and global output will also improve because the production was done efficiently. Let me take you through uh, a numerical example where we are going to uh, see uh, how we can measure com uh, absolute advantage uh, for the two nations. So we still maintain Zambia and China. 
Let's assume that uh, let's have uh, Zambia here, and then we have China here. So if uh, we assume that uh, we are made, we have copper, so two commodities, we have uh, copper measured in uh, tons per hour, and uh, then we have uh, clothes measured also in tons per hour. So if uh, we say that uh, Zambia can produce uh, 10,000 uh, tons of clothes, I mean of copper in an hour and uh, 50,000 tons of uh, clothes in an hour then uh, China can produce uh, 5,000 tons of copper in an hour and uh, 300,000 tons of uh, our clothes in an hour from this we can see that uh, both nations are endowed with the same amount of resources. They are all given an hour to produce different levels. And we see that in an hour, Zambia is able to produce 10,000 tons of copper, while China is able to produce 5,000 tons of copper. Which means that given the same hour that the nations are endowed with, Zambia is more efficient in the production of copper because it has used the same one hour to produce more output compared to China. In this case, Zambia is said to have an absolute advantage in the production of copper. And China is said to have an absolute disadvantage in the production of copper. If you, we look at uh, the clothing uh, column, we see that again, both nations are endowed with uh, one hour to produce clothes. And from this, we see that uh, given the one hour, Zambia is able to produce 50,000 tons of uh, uh, clothes, while China is able to produce 300,000 tons of clothes in an hour. Which means that China is using the same one hour to produce more output of clothes compared to Zambia. Therefore, China is said to have an absolute advantage in the production of clothes uh, over Zambia. And Zambia has an absolute disadvantage in the production of clothes with respect to China. Now that we have spotted the uh, 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 commodity of efficiency for each nation, next, uh, for these two nations to uh, benefit or to uh, improve world welfare, they will each have to specialize in the production of a commodity over its comparative, I mean, of its absolute advantage. Which means that Zambia will have to specialize in the production of copper, while China will have to specialize in the production of clothes. And after these nations uh, uh, produce the output, they can now each uh, exchange with the other nation for the commodity of its uh, absolute disadvantage, and both nations will gain from the trade. Let's uh, turn our focus to looking at uh, comparative advantage. Okay, so I will maintain uh, this same uh, example when we come to the numerical part so that uh, we see what the difference will be in terms of uh, comparative uh, advantage. So in the case of comparative advantage, a nation is said to have a comparative advantage over another nation in the production of a given product if it can produce that product at a lower opportunity cost. That is, if it will have to give up uh, the, the value of what you are giving up is less compared to the other nation. And a nation is said to have a comparative 
disadvantage with respect to the other nation in the production of a given commodity if it has a higher opportunity cost of producing that item. If we look at the two nations, Zambia and China, and two commodities, copper and clothes, if we are to define Zambia, Zambia's comparative advantage uh, in copper, it means that Zambia will have a comparative advantage in the production of copper over China if it has a lower opportunity cost of producing copper compared to China. This means that then China is seen to have a higher opportunity cost of producing copper uh, compared to the cost that Zambia is incurring. So for the two to, uh, to trade, it means then that we also have to bring back the concept of specialization, meaning Zambia will have to specialize in the production of copper and China will have to specialize in the production of clothes. And the two nations can exchange the output and we will see that uh, world welfare will improve and uh, world output will also grow. Now, quick to mention here is that it is very possible when we are now looking at comparative advantage, it is possible for one nation to have an absolute advantage in the production of two commodities. That is, in this case, it is possible for Zambia to have a, a, an absolute advantage in the production of both copper and clothes compared to China, uh, over China. And it's possible for China to have a comparative, I mean, an absolute disadvantage in the production of both copper and clothes. However, the comparative advantages will be different. If Zambia tends to have a comparative advantage in the production of copper, we will see that China will have a comparative advantage in the production of clothes. Let's take the numeric example behind and uh, see how we can uh, determine the uh, 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 pro product of uh, efficiency using comparative advantage approach. So uh, what we have here is a uh, uh, copper measured in tons per hour and here we have clothes measured in tons per hour. So as earlier stated, we see that here Zambia has uh, an absolute advantage in the production of uh, copper while China has an absolute advantage in the production of clothes. Now if we are to use comparative advantage, it means we have to get the opportunity costs of producing each item. Now using this structure of a table for you to get uh, the opportunity cost, you get the value of the foregone divided by the value of what you are going to produce. In this case, we are, if we are looking at copper production, it means that the opportunity cost will be equal to, let's put it simpler, foregone over gain. So in the case of copper, if Zambia has to, uh, is to produce copper, the opportunity cost of producing copper will be the amount of clothes which Zambia will not produce divided by the amount of copper which Zambia is going to produce. And this will give us the opportunity cost of producing copper for Zambia. Okay, so we have those figures here. So we have 5,000, 50,000 divided by uh, 10,000. So meaning that the opportunity cost of producing copper for Zambia is 5. So we have 5 here. Now, don't just leave it at 5, you need to attach the units. 5, five of what? So the opportunity cost of producing copper is 5 tons of clothes. So we measure the opportunity cost uh, using the units of the foregone. So we, the opportunity cost or uh, for Zambia of producing copper is five tons of clothes. So we can also do the same. So let me push this so that I create uh, enough space. 
So I have 10,000 here, but the opportunity cost is five uh, clones. So I can do the same here. So we can also find the opportunity cost of producing clothes for Zambia. So the opportunity cost of producing clothes is the amount of copper. So the opportunity cost of producing clothes is the amount of copper that you are giving up divided by the amount of clothes that uh, you are going to produce. So this will give you the opportunity cost of producing a ton of clothes. So with this, we see that uh, the amount of copper that Zambia is producing is uh, 10,000. So we will put 10,000 here. And the amount of copper that uh, clothes that Zambia is uh, producing, able to produce is 50,000. So from this, we see that uh, the opportunity cost then will be uh, 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 tons of copper. So let's use a CP for copper. So the opportunity cost of producing clothes for Zambia is 0 0.2 tons of copper. Let's now find the opportunity cost of producing copper and the opportunity cost of producing clothes for China. Join me behind. So the formula for opportunity cost remains uh, the foregone over the gain. So in this case, we are looking at the opportunity cost of producing copper for China. So it means for, for China to produce copper, it will give up uh, 300,000 300, uh, tons of uh, clothes to produce 5,000 to produce 5,000 tons of, uh, of copper which if I do this, uh, I'll have uh, so, sorry, this is 5,000, I've written 50,000 so this is uh, 5,000. So if I do this, I'll have a uh, CDC. So it means that the opportunity cost of producing uh, copper for China is 60 uh, tons of clothes. Meaning for China to produce one ton of copper, it will have to give up 60 tons of clothes or we withdraw that hour uh, which is needed to be able to produce 5,000 tons of uh, copper. We can also find the opportunity cost of producing uh, clothes for China. Let's do that. So for China to be able to produce 300,000 tons of uh, uh, clothes, additional 3,000, it will have to give up the whole 5,000 uh, tons of copper. Meaning that the foregone here will be 5,000 uh, and the gain will be the 300,000 that uh, China will, uh, will have to produce. So they will produce clothes. And if we check this, we see that uh, this will be something like 0, 0.0, uh, 0 point. We add the 50 there, so another 0, something like this, 0 0.016. So it means that the opportunity cost here will be 0 0.0016 tons of copper. Is that 0 0.00? So this into that to be 0, you put a point into 50 to be 0, you add the 0 into 500. Okay, so it's 0 0.16. Okay, so let's correct this to 0 0.016. Uh, tons of copper. Okay, so we have the opportunity cost. So to make sure that uh, your weight is clear, it's advised that you redraw the table and just show the opportunity costs and uh, then make your decision. In that case then, I'll remove these values here and only leave the opportunity costs.
So we said that a nation has a comparative advantage over another nation in the production of a given product if it incurs a lower opportunity cost in the production of that product. If we look at our table here, we see that uh, if we look at copper production, we compare the five uh, tons of clothes that would have to be given up by Zambia to produce one ton of copper and 60 tons of clothes that will have to be given up by China to produce one ton of copper. It means that, that Zambia has a lower opportunity cost in the copper production and thus Zambia has a comparative advantage in the production of copper over China. If we look at uh, the clothing uh, column, we see that the opportunity cost of producing one ton of uh, clothes for Zambia is 0 0.2 tons of copper. And the opportunity cost of producing uh, one ton of clothes for China is 0 0.016 tons of copper which shows that China has a lower opportunity cost in the production of clothes over Zambia. And as such, China has a comparative advantage over Zambia in, uh, in clothes production. With this then, according to the theory, Zambia will have to specialize in the production of copper, the commodity of its comparative advantage, while China will have to specialize in the production of clothes, which is the commodity of its comparative advantage. And then the two nations, after production, they can exchange the output through trade, and we will see that both nations uh, will gain from such trading because world warfare will improve and global output will increase. Let me take you through uh, another example where we are going to look at a case where both, uh, one nation has uh, an absolute advantage in the production of both commodities. Join me in the next example. Okay, so now let's uh, assume that uh, we are still looking at uh, Zambia and China. So this time around, we are going to produce wheat. We're going to look at the production of wheat and clothes. So let's have our table. So we have Zambia here and we have China here. And here we have uh, wheat which will measure in tons per hour and then we have clothes which will measure in tons per hour so if we assume that uh, Zambia is able to produce two tons of uh, wheat in an hour and one ton of uh, clothes in an hour and if we assume that China is able to produce 4 tons of wheat in an hour and 8 tons of uh, clothes in an hour, then from here we can ask ourselves the following questions. Maybe let me uh, throw this to you and see if you guess it right. Which nation has an absolute advantage in the production of wheat? Well, so if you say that China, then you are right. Because from here we see that given the same uh, resources, given one hour for each nation to produce wheat, Zambia is only producing two tons of wheat, while China is producing four tons of wheat. Meaning that China then has an absolute advantage 
in the production of wheat. If we go to uh, the production of clothes, we see that uh, Zambia uh, is producing one ton of clothes uh, given an hour, while China is producing eight tons of clothes given an hour. And clearly from that, we see that uh, China has an absolute advantage in the production of uh, clothes over Zambia. Because with the same amount of resources, China is able to produce more tons compared to Zambia. In general, from this table, China has an absolute advantage over Zambia in the production of both wheat and clothes. If we followed this, then it would mean that China would have to specialize in the production of both clothes and wheat, which will, have, will just mean that it will continue producing four tons of, uh, uh, of wheat and eight tons of clothes. But thanks to the theory of comparative advantage, the story will be different. Let's use comparative advantage to check uh, which uh, commodity Zambia has a comparative advantage over and uh, which one is for China. Join me in the calculations of uh, opportunity costs. Okay, so I've just put these closed so that uh, I'm assuming I've just drawn a new table so that I only show the opportunity costs for each nation. Now, let's start with uh, Zambia. The opportunity cost, according to the formula we had, the opportunity cost is equal to the foregone over what we gain. In this case, Zambia wants to produce wheat. It means that if Zambia has to produce more wheat, it means it will have to give up the uh, production of uh, clothes and then channel the resources to the production of wheat. Meaning in this case, given the values that we have, the foregone for Zambia in this case will be one for uh, which is the clothes and for it to be able to produce two tons of wheat. And this will simply give us 0 0.5 uh, tons of clothes. So the opportunity cost of producing wheat for Zambia is 0 0.5 tons of clothes. So we put 0 0.5 tons of clothes. We can also find the opportunity cost of producing clothes for Zambia using the same uh, formula we have here. So for Zambia to be able to produce uh, uh, clothes, it will have to give up resources needed for the production of wheat and channel them to the production of clothes. In this case, given the values that we have, Zambia will have to give up two units, I mean two tons of uh, copper uh, cloth, wheat production channeled to produce a ton of clothes, because it, meaning it will have to get the hour and channel it to the production of clothes. With this, it means then that the opportunity cost of producing uh, a ton of clothes for Zambia is two tons of wheat. So I'll put WT. So then the opportunity cost here will be two tons of wheat. We can also find the opportunity cost for China of producing wheat and the opportunity cost of producing uh, clothes. Okay, so the opportunity cost, I'm sure now you are familiar with the computation. The opportunity cost of producing wheat for China is uh, if China gives up eight tons of uh, clothes, it will be able to produce four tons of wheat, meaning it will have gotten all the hour needed and channel it to the production of uh, wheat. And this will give us a two, so meaning, uh, sorry, this is supposed to be clothes. So if China is to produce uh, uh, wheat, it will have to give up uh, the hour needed to the production of clothes and therefore to give up all the eight in order for it to produce 
four tons of wheat. And the opportunity cost will be two tons of clothes. In the production of clothes, China will have to give up the four uh, tons of uh, wheat for it to be able to produce eight tons of clothes. And this will give us 0 0.2 tons of wheat given up for it to be able to produce a ton of uh, clothes. So 0 0.2 tons of wheat will be given up to produce an additional uh, ton of clothes. So clearly from this, if we can rub off this so that we see only the opportunity costs, So from this, we see that uh, the opportunity cost of producing wheat for Zambia is 0 0.5 tons of clothes and the opportunity cost of producing uh, a ton of wheat for China is 2 tons of clothes. Which shows that then Zambia has a lower or smaller opportunity cost of producing wheat compared to China. And therefore, Zambia has a comparative advantage in the production of wheat over China. If we come to clothes production, we see that the opportunity cost of producing clothes, uh, a ton of clothes for Zambia is two tons of wheat. And the opportunity cost of producing uh, a ton of clothes for China is 0 0.2 tons of wheat. Meaning that China has a lower opportunity cost of producing uh, clothes uh, over Zambia or with respect to Zambia and as such China has a comparative advantage in the production of clothes over Zambia. Now that we've identified the uh, commodity of comparative advantage for each nation then it means that the two nations then for them to be able to gain more each nation will have to specialize in the production of a commodity of its comparative advantage. In this case, Zambia will have to specialize in the production of wheat, while China will have to specialize in the production of clothes. After the product has been produced, the two nations can exchange through trade and we will see that world output will increase and welfare will also improve. So this is about the computation of uh, uh, comparative advantage as well as absolute advantage. I'll see you in the other session where we will look at uh, the trade restrictions and the basis for restrictions. See you in the next video.